Hey guys, Chris here. In this video, we're doing the range efficiency and charging test in the Audi RS e-tron GT. This is the big boy, the RS version of the e-tron GT. As if the normal e-tron GT wasn't fast enough, this has 646 horsepower, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.3 seconds, but that's not the whole story because this car has a two-speed transmission. And when you go into second gear above a certain speed, it's like somebody kicked you in the back. It's like Nos from the first Fast and the Furious film. And I'm pretty sure that this could keep up or even beat Brian Supra from that movie. But today we're not testing performance. We're doing the range efficiency and charging test. We're starting here at Circle K in Fudeset. We're going north to the Mios Tower and then back again here. 260 kilometers on the motorway with 100 and 110 kilometer an hour speed limits. That's about 60 or 70 miles per hour. And then when we get back here, we're going to look at the consumption and then we're going to connect to the charger to see what kind of charging speed we can get under today's conditions, which is around 28 degrees Celsius. It's a hot day today. And at the very end of the video, based on the consumption and the battery pack of this car, we're going to calculate the theoretical range. So guys, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Chris. I have this channel dedicated to testing EVs. So please be sure to drop a thumbs up, a like on this video down below. And if you like EVs, if you like RS e-tron GTs, well, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. So I think we charged enough now, 98%, that's enough. And then I will see you guys on the road. We have now been on a road for 31 minutes and consumption is at 21.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, but we are climbing to an elevation in this first section of the road and we're running in individual mode, which is basically put the drivetrain into efficiency. So we should be just running in two wheel drive mode uh, to be the most efficient. And also our climate control is set to 20 degrees with the eco mode on because yeah, it's cold enough for me in here and outside temperature is 24 and a half degrees. So a few degrees colder than it was in Oslo or less hot or how you want to put it. Because once we started driving, it was around 26 degrees, not 28. That was there in the sun. So the weather today is beautiful and it's going to get hotter as the day yeah, progresses. And also the wind map shows about a two meter per second wind from the northeast. So yeah. We're just gonna go head on now, guys. And uh, this car is a cool car. I mean, you get the attention in this car, even though it's blacked out, people really do look at it. Even though it's been on the market for a little while now and you, you see, see them around and they're not, you know, as rare as they were around launch, they are still pretty, pretty nice and special. Okay, guys, so we're gonna keep on going here and I will catch up with you when we get to Mia's Tower. Check it out, guys. On our left, we have the Mios Tower, Mios Torna, the tallest wooden structure, wooden building in the world. 86 meters of engineering gloriness. Yeah, it's a pretty cool. And now with this beautiful weather in the background, it looks spectacular. It's a hotel actually, and they have a restaurant there. So one time I'm going to actually stay there and uh, eat there. I mean, the view today must be expensive exceptional from uh, from this place okay so this is our exit guys and we are now at 70 percent state of charge and we charge to 99 percent yeah 29 percent is what we have used thus far and that is tie with the mustang mach e guys which is the best car we have tested you know uh least battery usage in percent of course not in consumption but in percent we have tested of any car consumption now guys 20.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and i i think that's pretty good actually i think that is pretty good considering that this car has 21 inch in with 21 inch wheels which are 285 in front and 305 in rears yeah, that is insane and crazy. So, I mean, this car with its uh, drivetrain and it's it's not a small car, you know, it's uh, got quite a large footprint and it's luxurious, it's quiet, it's comfortable. So I don't think that's bad at all. And if we have, you know, this slight uh, headwind on the way up here, that consumption should 
be a little bit lower on the way back. So average speed now is 106 kilometers and we've been on the road for one hour and 13 minutes. So we're heading south again, guys, and I will catch up with you guys when we get back to Oslo. And we're not going to go to the Circle K station on the same side or on the opposite side. We're going to go just a few hundred meters down the road to the uh, to the uh, Esso station in uh, in in Alnabru because we are going to go to the charger close to my place to check out the charging speed. Okay, we are now back here in Oslo. We are exiting the uh, E6 motorway Oslo bound here on the opposite side of where we started to stop here at the Esso station because we are going further to the other side of town to the charger next to where I live uh, and end the video there. So we're just gonna go and uh, yeah, stop right here and look at the consumption. And yeah, look at this guys. 20.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. 106 kilometers an hour in average speed, 259 kilometers covered, two hours and 27 minutes on the road. And we are at 39%. So we have used 60% battery. That is impressive. That is not bad. And also outside temperature, 28 degrees. And it's going to get a little bit warmer even though, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, 3.30. So let's go ahead, drive to the other side of town, and I'll catch up with you guys when we get to the charger and see what kind of charging speed we do get after a few hours on the road. Okay guys, the chargers are right around the corner here. But just a disclaimer, uh, and this is something I didn't think about because I don't drive many cars, or there aren't actually that many EVs today that charge quicker than 150 kilowatts. This charges at a peak speed of 270 and there isn't any 350 kilowatt chargers in Oslo or close to here. I have to drive to, I think the closest is probably, is that Dahl, Ionity? So that's maybe like four, 50 minutes from here. So uh, yeah, uh, that's a bit uh, unfortunate, but we'll go do this uh, 150 kilowatt charger here, this Delta charger. You know, some of these 150 kilowatt chargers do deliver more juice than uh, park. Deliver more juice than uh, they the label says. In opposition to some of the chargers from like Chem, which don't. <laughs> you know the ones I'm talking about, the Fortum chargers in uh, Tvedestran. So okay, turn off the ignition now, and then let's go. And fortunately, we are the only car here. So. Uh, Maybe we'll get more speed than uh, these chargers are labeled for. So we have the, uh, you know, the DC chargers here on the, the right fender of the car, while on my e-tron it's on the left and on the uh, Q4 e-tron it's on the rear. So no, no consistency at all with these, uh, with these e-trons. And another thing also I want to mention, maybe make a whole other video, is that the, let's go ahead and do that, is that the, oh! <laughs> is that the the um, shifters and the regen in the, all of these uh, e-trons are different so you have this which has paddles which has the least regen and you can't put it into brake regenerative mode uh, even though it's the exact same shifter as you have in the Q4 e-tron and then you have my e-tron which doesn't have brake regenerative mode but it does have S to on the shifter to get all the power and then it has uh, regen on the pedals, which are more aggressive than this. And then you have the Q4 e-tron, which does have uh, brake regenerative mode on the shifter, which is quite aggressive, but it also has regen on the pedals, which works if you don't put it into regen, if you just put it into drive, and it resets every time you step on the brake or the throttle. It's weird, I know. If you're confused, I'm confused. There's a whole lot of inconsistency. But let's go ahead and check the speed here. We do have a kilowatt readout in the car, so we don't actually have to uh, look at this screen, but it's nice just to stand out here in the heat. And we are getting the peak speed of the charger at least here at 35%. I don't remember the charging curve of this. Is, is it flat up to like 50? 50% maybe? But we should be getting I think we should be getting like, if we were connected to a 300 kilowatt charger or 350, 
or 250 even we should be getting like above 200 now so I mean this isn't bad it will probably keep the speed up until like 80% or something like that but yeah I mean I've tested this car before um, charging is impressive this e-tron the e-tron GT charges um, 10 to 80 percent in yeah like 18 minutes it's insane with this big battery pack so let's go ahead step inside look at the consumption and calculate theoretical range yeah today before we end the video let's do the fun calculation to find out theoretical range under today's conditions so this car has a net battery capacity of 85.7 kilowatt hours so if we take that divided by the consumption which was 20.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and then we subtract about three percent in heat loss we get today under these conditions a theoretical range of 415 kilometers with an average speed of 106 kilometers an hour according to the car I mean, that is pretty darn good considering what this car is, the performance, the wheels and tires on this car. Yeah, that is pretty, pretty impressive. And that is in line with the range we got with the Mustang Mach-E long range rear wheel drive. I mean, this car is, it has a bigger footprint. It's wider. Yes, it is lower, but the wheels on this car compared to that, it's insane that car had like two 25 millimeter wide tires on 18 inch wheels these are 285s in front and three 305s in rear i mean and this also has about i don't know twice the power yeah this thing impressed me today this thing impressed me today you know it was never going to be the most you know efficient ev but considering the big battery pack and that consumption yeah this is a proper continental missile rocket I want to take this car one day hopefully maybe I can book one from Audi and take it down to the south of France to the south of Spain I don't know if there even is a charting network to support that but that would be very cool maybe next year when the world opens up or maybe this fall let me know down below if you would like to see a video like that so guys I hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always guys Please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.